Okay, so hey everybody, welcome to Be Honest. I'm really excited for today's pod show, if you will, because the actor, the extraordinaire, personal friend, um, he's also a dancer. Amazing uh, he, dancer. He's a director, a writer. The list goes on and on. Josh Jamel, thank you so much for being on Be Honest. How, How do you are know you? I'm such a good dancer? I just heard on the street, word on the street was that you were you a good dancer. You just get that vibe. I get, did you dance in Transformers? Uh, yeah, but none of that made the actual movie. Okay, what about Win a Date and Dad Hamilton? I with Dad did. Uh huh. You did, right? But none of that made the movie either. Okay, gosh, okay. Maybe, maybe uh, I should rethink the idea of me being a good dancer. Okay, you are not yeah. a good dancer. Yeah. You are a fan, though, and a football, of sports in general, and you used to play football. Am I? Am I did. I, tell me a little bit about that. I did play football. I played uh, all through high school and all through college. I played for the Minot High Magicians in high school, <laughs> and I played for the Minot State University Beavers in college. For four years? Four years. Oh. Yeah, I tried, to, I tried to leave after my sophomore year to go pro, but hey. nobody wanted me. So then I was going to leave my junior year, right. same thing, so for sure my senior year. but No one wanted you. Quarterback, never right? Never happened, yeah. Under center. Under Amazing. Center. Under center. A little bit of shotgun, but not much then. Okay. Pretty much everything was under center. So if you had to, was that D3? It was at the time NAIA Division II. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I yeah. disrespect you. What do you mean you? you're sorry? It's I did, D2. High level football. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so you are a Minnesota Vikings fan, yeah. hardcore, unapologetic. What I thought was interesting, and obviously we're in the middle of free agency. Um, last year around this time, two years ago around this time, everyone thought Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Great, great pickup. You said something, and I want to play it for you. Ooh. Okay. I just want to say welcome to the family and come in with that same enthusiasm, but I need you to win games in the clutch. We're already that close. I need you to win us a Super Bowl. You're getting paid a lot of money. Yeah. How'd that go? Well, that was always kind of the knock on him. Listen, I think he is, he, he's obviously a talented quarterback. He is, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. That's what I was going to say, pro too. My problem, and, and I, don't think that he's, I don't think he's incapable of winning these games. It's just for whatever reason, I haven't seen him go out and win a big one in the, in the clutch, and I want to see that from him. He's got the ability. It's just, and who am I to say? I played for Minot State University. But, uh, you know, Case Keenum the year before seemed to, seemed to, like, go out and try to win these games, not these little dink and dunk passes all over the place. Go out there and try to win it, man. So He's tr not trying to win it. I just... Some let it have, rip. Listen, You're just listen, saying let it rip. Some guys, you know, when yeah. there's two minutes left, that they're going to take that ball down the field and they're probably going to score. At Tom least Brady. get a field goal. <laughs> Tom Brady, Rodgers, Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. Some of these guys just have it. And for whatever reason, I haven't seen him do that yet. I still have, I still have faith in him, though. Do you really? Yeah. If you had a choice between Nick Foles and Kirk Cousins, who would you take? I would probably take. I'd probably take. I'd probably take Foles because I've seen him do it in the clutch. You know, it's all about winning games. You know, when everything is on the line. And that's been the knock on Kirk, even since he was at Michigan State. Like, can he do it? He's good. Yeah, he's great. He's terribly he's great. talented. Dude. He he had a, his his he had seventy percent in terms of completion yeah. percentage. He was great. Right, but those are all little you dink know, little and dunk passes. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Um, what, like, what separates the great ones from the ones who, who are just good? A, a lot of it is a natural talent. A lot of it is confidence. and a Staying lot of calm it, in the face of pressure. And, mm -hmm. and I don't think that he's not calm. I just think he doubts himself. I think he overthinks it. That's what I think. He, yeah. I think, and now it's in his head that he, do, he doesn't do that. So. He knows that's the knock. I not. mean, that last game of the season just drove me crazy. It's like we weren't, it's like, okay, we're, we're down by 10, I think, with three minutes left. And it's like we weren't trying to push the ball down the field. Yeah, it what's the problem? Just, I don't know. All right, well, I'm wishing you luck. I do know that uh, I want to talk to you about your, your fandom, if you will, because you're pretty hardcore. NFC Championship game. Uh, Eagles, I think, what was that, 2017 Eagles yeah. Vikings? Yeah, I was there. How was that? Oh, God, it was rough. Uh-huh. How were the fans? Not good. What do you mean by that? They were just, they. I mean, I literally... I mean, they, don't get me wrong, they weren't as bad as maybe some people, but little old ladies were, you know, flipping me off. Little old ladies flipped you yeah. off? 
little kids <laughs> elbowing me. I'm like, this is, like, this is when the game was over. They beat us like 38 to seven or something. They kicked you. I'm like, you just kicked our butts. Yeah, what do you? Huh? What do you? What, 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 what do you want from me? Mm-hmm. And, and so, maybe, what were you wearing? Maybe they I didn't... just had like black coat, black jeans or something, and, and a Vikings hat. Oh. It's not like I was all purpled out. Well, did you tell me you were a famous actor? I tell everybody that. And what happened? <laughs> Why did they? It doesn't go well. <laughs> And they gave me such a hard time. That's not fair. Maybe that's why they gave me a hard time. You know. They don't give a. They don't care. They don't care. In fact, that makes things worse. Okay. I, I want to tell everybody how we met because I think that's interesting. Okay. Okay. So you did a uh, you did a sports center in Bristol. Um, and I think you were promoting Transformers, were you not? Yes. Okay. And I believe my homegirl Elko was interviewing you. Linda Cohen? Yes. You know Linda Cohen? Yes, yes, yes. Did you know she's in the crease? Do you know what that means? No, was it? That's her show. She has a show about hockey. It's called In the Crease. <laughs> it's so random. It's smiley. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What do you, what, what do you mean she's in the You're crease? Like, what does that mean? Excuse me, this is X-rated. Uh, no, she, <laughs> she, she has this great show. After the show, I also interviewed you, and her and I talked about what you look like. Oh. Would you like to hear what uh, we said? We said on a scale sure. of 1 to 10, he is eh, probably a 2. I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. At this point, I'll take that. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. We were giving you a lot of compliments because we thought, we were like, well, how does he do it? What does he do? What's your secret? Share, oh, please. Please, really? Yeah, you, know, you don't feel I like really it? share my beauty secret? Yeah, maybe? what do you do? Uh, Stay up late? Last couple of nights, I've stayed up later than I should, so I'm, I'm feeling a little haggard Drink right a lot? I've uh, been drinking a lot of water. Okay, oh. I've been okay. drinking a lot of... My green goo, which okay. I have in my car. What about alcoholic beverages? Uh, Adult beverages? Yeah, I've, I've been known to have one or two of those. Okay. I try to keep that at a, you know, at a moderate level. Okay. Everything in moderation, <laughs> including moderation. Uh, what else? You are okay. There's also there's also this new thing I'm doing that you should you should try. Okay. You're walking to come over and try it. Is it what is it? So I'm getting this big, uh, like this big, it's like Nor- Norwegian, Scandinavian sauna thing. Mm. Uh-huh. And it gets to 200 degrees, and I got this big industrial ice maker, uh-huh. and a and a and like this big horse trough tub, like this big steel tub. Mm-hmm. So I put like 400 pounds of ice in this thing every day. Mm. You get uh, get in the hot tub first. Uh huh. Get in the ice bath for two minutes. Get back in the hot tub. Back in the ice. Back in the hot tub. Back in the ice. ice. And I t- I'm telling you, mm. there's something about I don't know if it dilates in in constricts your blood vessels, uh-huh. but you just, there's this high that you get from it. And, and I've just, been doing that. It seems to really help. There's a video that for, we have, guys. Um, and maybe this is what it, because we were going to say, what in the hell are you doing? Can, can we show? Oh, Josh, you have what we video have here? What, what, What's happening here? Oh, this was in, <laughs> this is in Montreal last weekend. That's real frozen water. That's just a little hole in the ice on a frozen river. It was so cold. And what do we do? Is that part of ah. this this beauty regimen you do? It's just part of, you know, I saw Laird Hamilton doing it, and, I've, and I heard about LeBron doing this after games. Uh-huh. A, lot of the, a lot of the pro athletes are doing it. Uh-huh. And I've been having some joint issues. So I figured I got to do something. After I work out, I need to recover. And that's, so I started, I built like this whole little like, thing at my house. Okay, is it working? I think so. Okay, you feel better? I just run a 4 5 40. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, can you dump? I mean a four, five, thirty. Oh my bad. Can you dunk? Uh, no. Okay. Not anymore. All right. Well, all right. Almost working. I could try. Okay. Never mind. Um, Depends I, on how high the rim is. <laughs> so last <laughs> night, it's interesting. Or the other night, Russell Westbrook. Let's be more specific. I want to get your take on this again because we started talking about fandom, and I thought it was interesting to see how pe- people react to fans. Like mm-hmm. you talked about the Philly fans being so aggressive with you. Uh, Russell Westbrook is in Utah. He's had a history with these fans, um, and apparently, according to him, one fan basically got out of control and this is his response to hit that fan and then I want to get your take so let's listen How it started was a um, young, young man and his wife in the stands told me uh, to get in on my knees like he used to. And for me, that's just completely disrespectful uh, to me. Uh, I 
think it's racial. Um, I think it's just inappropriate in a sense of um, there's no protection for the players. I just told him, I'm like, just sit down and ice your knees, bro. And he turned to me and he's like, that's heat, that's heat. And I'm like, well, you're going to need it. And then it turned into not safe for work. There's got to be something done. There's got to be some consequences for those type of people uh, that come to the game just to say and do uh, whatever they want to say. And um, I don't think it's fair uh, to the players, not just to me, but I don't think it's fair to the players. Um, and if I had to do it over again, I would say the same exact thing. Listen, so the guy says all he was saying, bro. Like he just, I, I have a hard time believing Russell Westbrook reacted that way because the guy said, just sit down and I should yeah. bro. Your take. One thing I love about Russell is that he cares so much about what other people think of him. <laughs> Dude does not care. I love that. I actually love that about him. Uh, yes. Kind of like Kobe. Yeah, sure. Kobe didn't give a uh, shit. At all, at all. You can buzz that out, right? Sure. And that's what I loved about Kobe. Yeah. He was just an alpha, alpha male. Right. And R Russell's kind of the same way. Sometime to his detriment, sometime right. to his benefit. I mean, he doesn't care. He goes out and just does it. Um... But I also think that there's there, there should just because you're a fan and go to these games doesn't give you free reign to say whatever you want. These are not these are human beings on the court. Mm -hmm. You should have some sense of uh, respect. Treat them with dignity. Let me you ask know? you this: There's a philosophy or there's a train of thought that people say, "Look, if it wasn't for the fans, you wouldn't make all that money." So they should be allowed yeah, but to say. Yeah, that's that's that doesn't mean you get to treat them like with disrespect. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm with you. I agree with the you. The truth is, yeah, these guys make their money because it is such a popular sport. Fans go pay a lot of money to go see him. They buy all the merchandise. But that doesn't give you the right to like say whatever you want to these guys. I, it's I'm just like, you. just because, you know, you know, somebody is working at McDonald's or wherever, I can just say whatever I want to you because you're working back there. No, I treat you with respect, just like I treat everybody with respect. Okay, so the, I got to call you out on this, though. What? Have you ever said something as a fan disrespectful to someone else in a position who, in a position of authority or a position of in the media, a position of someone who is on air? Maybe they say something you don't like. I don't always dis. I, yeah, I'm, I, have, I have strong opinions about things. Have you Definitely. been disrespectful? I don't think so. Have I? You, you got some tape on this? I don't something? have any tape, but there was a 2012 tweet to one of our former anchors. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's because he was so disrespectful. You're talking about, <laughs> you're talking about, what's his name? Merrill Hodge. Merrill Hodge. Yes. Who was absolutely <laughs> disrespectful to, to Tim Tebow. And all I said was, he's 10 times the football player you ever were. But what'd you say before that? I don't remember what I say. You, you called him a name. What'd I call him? Why are you acting like such a <laughs> yeah, That was the name, that's yes. What I said. <laughs> that's exactly. Yeah, but I was just saying the truth. <laughs> That wasn't me. That wasn't. He does. Kids. He, I'm not, <laughs> He's I, no longer here, I'm so not, I can't defend him. I'm but not yeah. contradicting myself. Okay. That guy went too far. What's the difference between what you're saying and what that fan did? What's the difference between your tweet and what that fan Meryl did? Meryl Hodge is calling it out. He's he is okay. he's 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 absolutely calling out Mer Tim sure. Tebow, who doesn't have a say. He was not there in front of him. Sure. Talking about what a terrible quarterback he was. Sure. Which I disagreed with. I thought I thought Tim Tebow, you know, he's not Aaron right. Rodgers, right. but he won football games, sure. and you know, and I just thought that he was just he just went overboard. You okay. and I just felt so compelled to like knock him off his block a little bit. Yeah, you did. You felt yeah. I really did. I just felt like you were way you're going you've gone way too far. Today. Well, by way of background, it's it's so weird how there's such a relationship that is developed between a fan or someone who is a viewer and a person mm -hmm. on television, uh, a fan and a player. That that particular fan and he deleted his Twitter account but had been after Russell for some time. So I don't yeah. believe that there was more said than we know. So I understand so you, where you're coming. So you you're comparing that. I just asked. I just asked. <laughs> I was, defend because you I was were defending, defending somebody. You, no one asked you to defend him. Yeah, but why can't I defend somebody? He wasn't. He couldn't defend himself. <laughs> Meryl Hodge has got this 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 platform to talk all kinds of smack about somebody. When, I, when this guy is a way better football player than he ever was. By the way, every bone in my body is the same person you are. I okay. say I, I defend everybody who I think that you should not talk trash about. Like I and I find myself often in the same position of being you know, held accountable or sometimes compared to others that I shouldn't be compared to. Right, and that's what that's what this that's what we that's what you guys do. This that's is, what we do. This is sports. But talk. this is also this is, but it's also who you are. You don't you don't think that's fair. I period. just felt like it was it was 
it was a, he just went too far, and it was a little bit unfair, the treatment of Tim. I also should tell people, um, you appeared on a show, and, and I wasn't your friend for two weeks. Do you remember that? Say again? Remember that show you appeared on, and I wasn't your friend for two weeks? Oh, yeah. Because you wouldn't come on my show? Oh, yeah. You never asked me to come on your show. I, uh, do, should we talk about that show? Can we talk about I'm talking to you. I'm looking at you, I'm look, but I'm looking at them. Yeah. Can we talk about it? I don't care. So I'm here to talk about uh, this the show's called Be Honest. <laughs> you got to be honest. So I wanted him to come on Be Honest. Yeah. And I wanted you to come on Sports Nation at the time. And you were like, oh, I'm so busy, I'm so busy. And then you pop up on this show on Fox Sports 1. So busy, so busy. I don't remember why I did that and I couldn't do it. There was something, there was some scheduling thing. What happened after that show on Fox Sports 1? Oh, God, that was, uh, I unleashed. <laughs> I unleashed some, I, I, I unleashed the warriors on me. <laughs> I was like, how? Oh, wow. I didn't expect that. <laughs> I'm just trying to stand up for my, you know, uh -huh. my, my, my baby mama. Oh, your baby mama, huh? And they, they came at you. They came at, they came hard. But it was funny. You know, I thought, I thought it was funny at the end of the day, but I was like, okay, lesson learned. Don't provoke the champion. Okay, so what happened? And then they did a whole video. They dedicated a video to you or, or just tried to make, they were mad at you, so they did a video, right? Didn't they do a locker room video or something? They took some remix of... The, the, the anthem, anthem. Uh -huh. and did a uh, did a whole did, did like this this whole dance in the locker room. I forget. <laughs> it made you it popular. Was, it was funny. It made you popular. It, it, you know what I, you know what I learned from that 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 NBA Twitter no is joke. is a whole other universe. I mean that is a whole universe unto itself. They like <laughs> unleash the dragons on me on that one. Completely undefeated. So were people in your mention saying kind things to you? What were they saying? What do you mean? Like, did people like tweet you or tweet at you after that and say, we love you, Josh, you're great, we're just having some fun, or don't mess with the Warriors? And it was it was mostly <laughs> shut up and go back to your corner. <laughs> That's mostly what it was. I knew that. I'm, I'm, I'm totally having some fun with you because I, I look, I know that you didn't want it. You didn't mean to start any trouble. That wasn't, no. even, yeah, that wasn't no. even what you But you know what? Here, I'll say this yeah. that I did go too far when I, about, about, uh, you did? Draymond. Okay. I shouldn't have challenged his man. It's, it's, it's just, oh man. Um, I don't know why I did that. I just felt a little bold in the moment. Maybe I, there's a good example of, you know, what we were just talking about. And I, and I, if I were to take any of it back, I would never have said a real man would do this or that. You know, it wasn't that. I just, my whole thing was I just felt like he could have, he could have just, you know, realized that, you know, that caused somebody a lot of pain. pain. Yeah. I, you know what? That's fair. Mm -hmm. We forget that people, once again, like the fans, they're human too. There's a humanity to all of this. You're yeah. absolutely right. That's very fair. I appreciate it. And we video. all should remember that, by yeah. the way. Just oh, because boy. somebody's in the public eye doesn't mean they're <sighs> bulletproof. No. You know? And so, you know, I try to be, I try to be conscious of that. I try not to go too far. I do have opinions about things. I try to defend. And I sometimes probably push the envelope more than I should. That's okay. That makes you who you are. I think it also lends to why you've been successful on and off camera. Um, I know that I've been a fan since, Is I wanna make sure I get it right, win a date with Tad Hamilton. Yes. Been a fan since, that was it. Really? Locked in since then. Okay? Wow. That, I mean, How I'm old are you, you, like seven? Probably, and I was like, I wanna win a date. And then I met you and I'm like, he's so nice. He's the real Tad Hamilton. But your name is Josh. My name is Josh Hamilton. Uh, Josh Hamilton, guys, in studio. <laughs> <laughs> then now, here you are after being like a soap opera actor or soap actor, I don't know what you call them. Is that the way to say soap actor? Yeah. Okay, soap actor. I was actor. an actor on a soap opera. Uh, actor on a soap opera, you transition, now you do films, and then most recently, Buddy Games, your own project, yeah. your baby project. Tell me about that. So, I had this idea a couple years ago, actually four years ago, to write this script based on this thing my friends and I do every year called the Buddy Games, yeah. where we get together. It's a weekend of games. You Everything, and your friends really yeah, do this? Yeah, from, from, from when we were in like college. We've okay. been and so it's just, it's just a weekend of, of mayhem mm -hmm. and debauchery. And, and guys, by debauchery, you mean just... By debauchery, I just mean guys just acting like idiots for the weekend. Okay. It's just all dudes. Okay. We've all known each other forever. Um, and so we wrote this, I wrote this script and sold the script. They let me direct it and we're about to, I think it'll be out sometime this, later this year, probably hopefully September. Mm -hmm. And it is really funny. If you say I so promise yourself. Lee, I uh, promise you that. Uh -huh. 
I'll send you the link. That's it? That's all I got? It's just well, funny? What do you want? It's, well, it's... Who, okay. Who's in it? So here's, so here's what the story <laughs> is. It's about these guys who get together to do this every year. Right. They haven't been able to do it for five years because one of the guys got really injured five years ago and the group kind of drifted. Okay. And in an effort to pull her son out of this funk that he's in, she comes to me to try to, uh, you know, get the guys back together to help her son Whatever. have something to look forward to. Sure. He agrees to do it if the guy that did what he did to him doesn't show up. <laughs> and of course that guy shows up. Of course. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a story about, you know, friendship. Okay. How important friendships become as we get older. Uh, and it's it's just a, it's a really outrageous raunchy dude comedy with a lot of heart by the way I'm not I, gonna lie I have to ask you this I, as I think as you transition because in your world even in my world when I think about different roles that I would like to be involved in meaning different positions trying to be behind the scenes not necessarily in front of the camera how intimidating is that to go from being an actor to a director um, editing really being so closely connected to such a project and then you have to put it out there for the world and hope that they love it or not love it but you have so much you're so attached to it how intimidating if not scary is well it's i mean it's it's the, na it's the nature of the beast i mean this is what we do we have to you know we all put ourselves out there mm -hmm. sometimes we win sometimes we don't okay uh this you know directing and writing was something i had done but i knew this subject matter so well that i knew that i could do it and i also knew that i didn't know everything and i needed to surround myself with people who did That's fair. and and I, and I knew that I didn't have all the answers, but I knew a lot more than I thought I knew. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I was able to just sort of delegate where I needed to. I knew the vision that I wanted to sort of execute, yeah. and we did it. We really, really did it. I'm really, really proud of the movie. All right, well, I'm gonna watch it. I can't wait for you to see I'm, it. I'm gonna watch it and give you a hardcore critique. You know how I am. Please do. All right, before I let you go, I gotta ask you like maybe five questions. You okay. Know, first thing that comes to your mind, you gotta, you gotta, be, you gotta be honest. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Be honest, yes. What actor right now can't you stand because he's taking roles from you? Uh, <laughs> Chris Pine. What? I only say that because he's my friend <laughs> and we have the same manager. <laughs> but he's so good. He is that the it. truth? He's great. I, no, but is that the truth? Is that who you're going to say first? I don't even know. If, I don't even know if I'm being considered for the same stuff he is. Okay. But he's great. Okay. So, you're, so he's doing stuff that I want to do. Okay, that's it. All right, fine. Because he's your friend. I'll take it. Is that honest? Who are you dating? Um, Nobody. Nobody. Would you date I'm Linda? Being honest. Would you date Linda Cohn? Yes. Ow! Because she she's in the crease, guys. Okay. She here? Yeah. Well, she works here in this okay. studio. We must get this to her. Okay. Okay. Seriously. All right. You're. Ooh, you're in trouble. All right. <laughs> uh, favorite football player all time. Troy Aikman. Really? Yep. Why? I just always loved, uh, I loved him in college. Uh-huh. Uh, when he played at Oklahoma and UCLA. Sure. I loved him for the Cowboys. I loved the way he carried himself. He never tried, to, he was never pre on. He just like made everybody around him better. Sure, all right. And I love him as an announcer. He's excellent. He does yeah. great, and he's very honest. Yeah. Uh, favorite basketball player all time? <sighs> Ooh, ah. Uh... You only can pick one. I'm gonna say, I can only pick one. Can I say two? <laughs> you can say two, but you got to pick one. If you had, if you had it's, to put one on your it, team, it's between Allen Iverson and Steve Nash. What? Yeah. Between? Yeah. How is that even between? Because they were both just. Well, Iverson was was like next level athletic. I yeah. saw him play a few times. He, yes. So it should just he be AI. Just so if you good. had to choose between AI but and Nash, Steve Nash, Nash for those couple of years was like a magician on the basketball court. He was unbelievable. Is that a racial thing? What do you, you just want to put a white guy in there? Because you're white? Yeah. Okay. Thought so. No, I, I'm, I'm, I don't see color. I don't see color. <laughs> I'm totally teasing you, good grief. I don't. <laughs> Why well, you got to make it all racial? Because yeah, huh? that's what I do. Why you, why, why you got to be like that? <laughs> why I got to be like that? <laughs> Josh Jumel, you are a pleasure. Thank you. Long time coming. I'm no longer mad at you. Okay. We're officially friends again. Okay. Because you were concerned. All right. Uh, no? No, no, no. A little bit. A, a, a little bit. All right. Little Josh Jamal. Let's give it up for Josh Jamal, everybody. Let's there we go.